Welcome everybody to the South Carolina American Revolution Sester Centennial Commission webinar this afternoon. We really appreciate you all joining us. We have a lot to cover uh, and I know you're very excited about uh, the opportunity to get some some money. Uh, so grants are always fun, but there's a lot to, to do to get them uh, through the system. And we're going to talk about some of that today. We're going to start with just some basics about SC 250 and also talking about the different types of grants. And I appreciate everybody's patience. If you've heard some of this before, uh, we will get through it as quickly as we can. So the 23 fiscal year grant programs from SC 250 are all inspired by um, education and cultural tourism. Here's your support team on the call today. We have our executive director, Molly Fortune. I am Heather Hawkins, the coordinator now, officially the grant uh, director for SC 250. And Bill Davies is our guy on the, the ground out there in all these counties. So a lot of you represent your county 250 committees, and we thank you for all that you are doing. He's probably, you've probably seen his face before. We're gonna talk first about why. Why are we celebrating this anniversary? There were over 400 plus skirmishes, battles, and bloodshed during the American Revolutionary War era here in this state. Um, yes, South Carolina is the answer to this question. The state with the second most incidents. Uh, New Jersey is the only one that outranks us. Uh, you would think it would be Boston or Philadelphia or New York, but actually New Jersey and then South Carolina with the most events during this time period. So we've got a lot to be proud of and a lot to talk about in this very complex uh, era that we uh, have a, a lot to cover. When is the anniversary? That's probably the number one question that we get. Um, it is right now. Yes, there will be fireworks on July 4th, uh, 2026, but so much more. The commission has decided that their definition of the revolutionary era is 1770 to 1783. That takes us from the Boston Massacre and the British government actually comes to a halt here in South Carolina in 1770. That early, they've already kind of parted ways. The, the folks who were in the, um, the, the government here that were representing the people and the governor part ways in 1770 and it gets comp more complicated from there. And then it takes us all the way up to 1783. That's the treaties of Paris as each uh, state has their agreement with Great Britain. And so that takes us 2020 to 2033. A lot of things going on. And of course, 1780, 1781 is where you'll see some of your bigger battles here in South Carolina that will I'll be talking about soon. So let's talk about how we're going to celebrate. As I mentioned, education and cultural tourism are the pillars of the commission, and we have nine grants to help you do that. The first thing we want to talk about, though, is who can apply for these grants. And there's a whole big list, uh, everybody from local governments to, of course, the county 250 committees or their fiscal agent. Uh, tribes, museum, for-profit organizations even. So we've got some, some public-private uh, partnerships for some, particularly with cultural tourism uh, companies that we're looking at. And a reminder that the best practice on who is the actual applicant is that that should be the fiscal agent. So if you are representing a county 250, but your county or your city is actually going to be your fiscal agent, technically the county or city would be the applicant. So keep that in mind. They'll be the one signing the grant agreement. They'll be the one who will receive the funds. Uh, so they do have to be a part of that process. And the fiscal agent organization and the project director organization can be completely different. And we'll see that in the example that I'll do for you later. So let's talk about deciding that fiscal agent and telling the, the folks that you're asking to be this fiscal agent for you what their responsibilities are. So they have to provide fiscal agent documentation for the application, obviously. They officially sign the grant agreement and the web grants online. They follow <laughs> their local procurement policy. So um, grants do not technically fall under state procurement. However, um, you do need to follow your fiscal agent's procurement policy. And if you don't have a written one, we do encourage you to look at state procurement policy uh, to make sure that, um, that you're, you're falling in line with making sure we have three options and doing some of the things that, that we're all very familiar with. But if you have any questions about that, please let me know. There is a page on our website that specifically talks about that. 
manage receipts. So we worked really hard on being able to send a lot of the money up front, but I am relying on you guys when you apply to say that you are gonna get me every single receipt for this money. Um, so there's, a, there's definitely a, um, a, a weight on you if you are the applicant and the fiscal agent that you're gonna provide those receipts for that final report. And available for audit, if the funds, ran, if it's randomly selected, we will have a potential that you may have to audit the funds. So you need to keep uh, your documents for a certain number of years. So let's talk about these different types of grants. The first one is the County 250 Organizing Grant. This is only available to the official County 250 committee or fiscal agent on their behalf. Um, the amount is $3,000 that's set per county. There's only, you can only get this one time. It is non-competitive. However, you still have to complete an application. It is a slightly reduced application, but you still have to talk about your deliverables and your timeline and provide all your documentation for your fiscal agent. The, there is a list of approved projects for this, uh, this County 250 organizing grant. And a lot of people are choosing to do a strategic plan. So that's one of the, the things that we have listed, a survey of the people, places, and stories, historic research, um, designing a trail, mem um, memorializing your hero heroines. There's a whole bunch of things listed. And then there's other. So you can define your own project, but you do have to clearly define it. And I want to be really clear when when this list was made it was made with big broad topics so make sure the scope of work that you three thousand dollars is is great to get but it is not a huge amount of money so you want to make sure that when you're defining your deliverables for your county 250 organizing grant you are saying this is what i can get done with this amount of money so here's my big plan and then make sure you're clearly defining what will be phase one uh, what's going to be actually be done with that $3,000. So be, be thinking about that as different phases for some of these that are big projects. And sometimes you can get it done all in one, but big projects you might want to phase in. The next one we want to talk about is our local museum style panel grant. We just had this one that you're seeing here installed at, in Jasper County at the Morris Center. And you can also locate them out in other places other than museums. And I, in fact, encourage that you could put it in a public place that could point back to the museum or other historic areas in your communities. Uh, this is a great one because it has a map that tells you all the different locations that you can go and visit that are related to the American Revolution in Jasper County. It talks about some inclusion. We have Jim Capers, which is a fabulous story of an African-American war veteran and lots of other things that are on there. Uh, it's a lot, but it is a really interesting. It is, a, you can take it down and move it around. So there's lots of options that you can do with this panel grant. This is up to $5,000 and this is competitive. We also have local activities grant. Now I want to make sure you note that the amount has actually been increased for this grant up to $25,000. And it does not mean that everybody needs to apply for $25,000. That means that uh, there were a lot of things we had not considered that were great projects. Um, and a lot of them fall under this category. So we did, um, by executive committee, raise this amount uh, that you, that's a possibility. So keep that in mind. It is competitive. Uh, and this one does require a match. Uh, it's 80% of SE250, 20% of the total budget for, from the grantee. County Asset Assessment and Historic Tourism Plan. This is really to help set you up. If you have a lot of events, particularly in your county, you can have um, an entity come in, do the research for you, give you that concise list of assets, do the historical research on each site, make sure it's in, located in the right place. Then they turn around and they give you the tourism plan. Because again, historic tourism is our, one of our main things that we want to get accomplished with this and set up to go forward into the future for South Carolina. So having not just the assets identified correctly, but also having that tourism plan can be a really powerful tool for your committee. Now this one is a 50-50 match. But this is one that we've often seen county PRTs and other organizations saying, yes, I will put up the other $10,000 because this will set us up for projects into the future. So this one is up to $10,000. It is competitive. 
And just a quick reminder to make sure that you are muted. We, I'm hearing a little background noise, so just keep that in mind. All right, research grants. Now, this is one that is one of the few where an individual can apply for this grant. So um, this is, and there, there's some slight modifications of the application because of that. And we'll talk a little bit of that as we go. Um, this is up to $20,000 and it is competitive. Again, want to make sure we're clearly defining the deliverables on this um, and what's going to be researched and what you're going to have at the end of the research is very important on this one. Publication grants. Again, this is one of the few where individuals are eligible um, and this is um, one that could be digital. That's another thing that I want to mention that publication grants could mean a digital version and this is up to $30,000 and it is competitive. Education grants. Um, this is one of um, our primary goals, education. This is up to $10,000. There's no match required for this one. It is competitive, however. And there's my mom and dad when we stopped in Utah Springs. So uh, that's signage and marker grants from interpretive signs to tourism, direct directional signs, historic markers to marking your 18th century roads is also under this umbrella up to $10,000 and it is competitive. The site grants. Now, this is another really big push. Uh, we've, we've had some big ask for our budget from the state for the state legislature and they've been very generous with this and large and a large chunk of this is intended to go to sites, bringing new cultural tourism sites online where they're visitable, meaning that there's safe parking, there's interpretation. So there's several different parts of this. Planning, acquisition is e even a possibility, development, and that could include training docents under development, um, renovation, um, but make sure that renovation is not deferred maintenance. We're really looking at like, are you bringing up to ADA compliance or adding new value to the site? Um, and this match requires is a, an 80-20 split there. So keep that in mind. And those numbers can get big if you're looking at acquisition. And there's going to be lots of documentation that we will need for, for you from you for that. But the good news is that we do have a new site development manager. Mike Tyler is our site development manager. And uh, he is here to help kind of you think through this process and assist you in, in some of this as we go forward. This one does not have a cap. It is based on merit of the uh, project. Uh, it is competitive and there will be lots of documentation, particularly if you're looking at acquisition. So let's talk about some deadlines. So we have, we're set up where the County 250 organizing grants can be applied for and submitted at any time. The only person who has to approve them, uh, we have to do some paperwork approval, but then our executive director can sign off on these, meaning uh, that you can submit these at any time and hopefully we can quickly turn those around for you. Uh, May 9th at 3 p.m. is the final time for this fiscal year. Our fiscal year ends June 30th, so that'll be the last time we'll accept those applications. All other grants are competitive grants. Um, we have quarterly reviews set up while the funds last. And we do have funding left for uh, quarter three, and that deadline is February the 9th. Again, at 3 p.m. is when the system will shut off for accepting applications, and they do all have to be applied for through the Discover SC Web Grants program. So we talked a little bit about grant funding distribution and trying to get some of that money up front. Well, we're doing our very best for the County 250 organizing grants. We know a lot of these committees have no funding whatsoever at this point. So the county municipal, um, if you have your county or your municipality as your fiscal agent, we can send you that $3,000 up front with all your documentation. Uh, you do still have to fill out a final report and turn in receipts. But all other fiscal agents, it would be 80% up front and then 20% upon final paperwork. All other competitive grants would be 80% up front, 20% upon final paperwork, and can I say 12 times, receipts, 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 receipts. Make sure you're keeping your receipts. Uh, for those will be required to get that final 20% sent to you. And think about that, um, that distribution when you're looking to negotiate contracts with your graphic designers or your webmaster, whoever's going to be working with you, 
let them know they may have to wait a little bit for that final payment. Uh, because if you don't have any cash flow, which I know a lot of you guys don't because you're brand new committees uh, without um, backing organizations. So um, if we're asking to spend the people's money, that means documentation and paperwork. So let's talk about that. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to the South Carolina Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Department. They have been amazing partners for us. This is the Discover SC Web Grants program, and they've graciously allowed us to put our applications in their system. So salute to SCPRD. The, we're going to register first, and we're going to, when we do our demo in a minute, um, we'll talk a little bit more about registering. Some of you have already done so. Um, thank you for that, and we'll um, make sure you all get in the system. And then you're going to go through, and there are going to be these components that you'll have to complete in your application. General information, cover sheet, narrative, assurances, support documents, and budget. And let's talk a little bit first about um, narrative best practices. These are some things that I think have snagged a couple people. And if I have to do negotiate changes, it's often under some of these things that we're going to talk about next. The first thing that I think is really helpful, I'm going to show you where you can download a Word version of the application. Please remember you cannot submit that application and you are not required by any means to use it. But a lot of people are finding it helpful to use this, particularly for the narrative to uh, write out their answers. Please watch the character count. It, we do not have a huge amount of space in the system set up for this. So when you're writing in Word, do keep an eye on that. Not just word count, it's character count. Um, also the narrative, um, not only the narrative, but the assurances section of the Word version of the application is very nice to share with the person who needs to review those um, requirements before they officially sign off on that section. So. Consider using the Word version for prep. The next thing um, that's really important, the, the project summary is going to go straight into your grant agreement. It copies into it. This is your elevator speech. Um, so, and there are actually two questions in that same block. One is kind of the elevator speech, what is your summary? And two, making sure you're making a real clear case of how this connects to the American Revolution in South Carolina. So making sure that you have that tied in is important with that answer. The next section that's super important, this is the deliverables and the impact. Uh, there are two questions in this again. Uh, what is going to be your tangible, what are those tangible items that you will have at the end of the day? Be very careful with this section because it goes in the grant agreement and you want to make sure that with the amount of money that you have in that budget, you're going to be able to deliver on those items. Uh, we can make adjustments to this later on and make contract amendments, but it's better to make sure that you're thinking about, I, can I actually deliver on what I'm putting in this section? Um, also in this section, you want to talk about your, your um, matrix. How are you going to measure success? So what are you going to do to say, yes, this worked or it didn't, or how can I share this information with my other County 250 groups? So the two-part answer in that section, and that's very important. Budget. There are a lot of notes here. I apologize. But the first thing is, please don't create your budget based around the amount that's the total. Um, I ask you to really think about what are you going to spend that money on? That's the best practice is start with getting quotes. Do your homework, uh, get those quotes, come up with a budget that actually uh, what you're going to spend money on to accomplish that goal that you just told us about in the narrative. Not all budget categories um, may be compatible with your grant. As we look at it, you're going to see there are multiple categories within the budget. Feel free to skip a section. For example, we don't expect to see land acquisition in the organizing grants. If the uh, grant request amount is part of a larger budget, Please only include SC250 funding request in the budget breakdown section. I want to make sure that anything that is additional part of your budget is in the other uh, cost share section. Uh, and so you have your total budget listed in there, but you're making sure that in the top section, you're only listing those items that you're requesting from SC250. Make sure to not exceed the total amount available for this grant type and the breakdown. We tried to, to make things kind of generic so it's easier to clone. So we're using the same budget format for each grant type, but this means that there's nothing in the system that will stop you from applying for more than eligible in that grant type. 
So please make sure that you're not exceeding that up to amount when you're doing that. And for um, the county 250 organizing grants, that means $3,000. However, if you do have a larger total budget, maybe the chamber is going to give you some extra money to get it done and the county is going to give you some money. Put that in that cost share amount, show us that total budget, but make sure the section on the top is only $3,000. Again, that's an example for the county 250 organizing grant. And uh, some of the, the sections are a little confusing. Personnel refers to staff. So if this is the museum staff, they're going to do some administrative overhead work. Um, or if this is, uh, they're going to be actually be doing the research. That's where you're going to list um, the personnel. Most people are going to fall under contractual because you're going to say, I'm going to contract with this historian. I'm going to contract with this graphic artist. I'm going to contract with this in individual to buy their property. So keep those two sections separate. Personnel is staffing and contractual refers to contracts for work. And then administrative staffing a reminder that that section and that personnel section, if it is about administrative overhead, that is allowed, but no more than 20% of the budget request. And make sure that you are thinking the difference between budget request and total budget. So budget request is what you're asking for SC 250. That can, that's the 20% of that. And then in a moment, we're going to talk about your matching funds. So when you talk about matching funds, that refers, that percentage refers to your total budget. So um, if your match does require, um, if your grant does require a match, remember that that percentage is part of the total budget, not 20% or 50% of your ask. And another reminder that, that those matching funds cannot be other state funds. So if you're buying property, the conservation bank would not be eligible for, for those matching funds. You can't use those to double up. Also the in-kind, while we love to see that in-kind donations have been made and y'all are being very conscious with your budgets, uh, we wanna make sure that we don't include that for the official matching funds of a grant. So, um, as we said, we want to make sure that we're building a budget based on actual needs, but sometimes you want to figure out what that 20% should be. There is a formula uh, that we have here. So, for example, if you were asking for um, $300,000 for a site acquisition, you, you divide that by 80%, that would give you a total budget of 375. And then you multiply 375 times 20% would give you the matching amount of 75%. So that's a good little formula to keep in your back pocket as, as you try to figure out that budget. Um, keep that in mind. And uh, I will be sharing all of this with you guys afterwards. So keep, uh, don't worry about having to get right everything down. Okay, now uh, it is time for us to do a quick demo. Now, uh, does anybody have questions while I shift what I'm sharing here? And you are probably muted, so you may have to unmute yourself. Molly, do we have any questions in the uh, in the section there? Not at this point, and I don't see any hands raised. So if you have anything, just let us know, please. All right. Well, let's see if I can share again. Hey, we do have a question, Martha. Thank you very much. Does the site grant include exhibits? So if you're talking about an exhibit, like in a museum or at like the chamber of commerce or a school that would be under your museum style panel grants more than likely. Um, but if you are looking at site grants, if you are developing a new museum, I guess that would be a site grant. Does that make sense? Or it doesn't, it can include interpretive signs or outdoor exhibits, I guess, it could be included there. Do you have a specific question or example? All right, it says that it's, yes, thank you. If you, if you have a question about, you know, does it fit in this hole, um, maybe a square peg, don't hesitate to call us because we may be able to figure something out and that's the beauty of it. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. All right, well, so we are now on um, line. This is our website, SouthCarolina250.com. 
Here is our grants uh, page. You can click directly on this to get an overview look, or you can go directly to one of the pages specifically for um, the grants. I'm going to hit the overview page just by clicking on the top one. This is a great sheet. This is the 250 grants basic downloadable sheet. So you might want to go here and print this out. This is great to take to a committee meeting to review and take a look at each type of grant. You can also see the breakdown here of the amounts and the deadlines uh, for each of these. And then you would just click through. We're going to do an example of a local activities grant. So if you click through to that type, you'll see the grant requirements. This is that list of potential projects. It's listed both on the county organizing grant and on the local activities grant. There's a list of a approved or suggested projects, but always there is an other. And there's some documentation of what your fiscal agent's going to have to provide for the uh, for the grant. And again, originally it was 8,000 and has now been increased. Um, so, and down here are some helpful links. This is where you can find that Word, Word document paper version of the application. You can just click right there. But I'm going to go ahead and register for the Web Grants program. So if you ever can't find this page, you can always go back to our grants page and find it there. So um, we're going to click here to register. And I'm not actually going to register, but I do want to mention two things. Make sure if you're registering for the first time, uh, make sure to choose SE 250. That way the uh, notification comes to me. An administrator does have to approve your registration. That's just so we don't have duplicates in the system. And that way I, I know more of who's registered in, uh, already, but it is a universal um, system of uh, contacts. So if you have registered maybe for another program with PRT, you see they're all listed here. Um, and you can, you can already be in the system for them, um, but you, can, you don't have to register twice, is what I'm trying to say. But if you are registering for the first time, make sure you select this one in the drop down. You do have to have your federal EIN number to register your organization. This is where um, you would want to do organization type. If you do not have an EIN number or you are an individual, if you put individual, it removes that requirement. You will, if you are an organization, you are eventually going to have to have an EIN number in the system. Um, but if you need to register without it, if you're a County 250 group as your organization name. Um, but once again, I do want to mention fiscal agent is going to, who's going to be the applicant. So you might want to register under the fiscal agent's name, not the County 250 as your organization. All right, so let's, um, I've already registered, so we're going to go back out here and get my, um, my user, if it can, it's going to be fun, isn't it? All right, and I'm going to use my out external user to sign in, and I'm going to go to applications. Actually, I'm going to go to funding opportunities. So when you first start in here and you want to uh, get, pick a, start a, a, a grant application, you want to look and make sure that you're looking at SC250. You see there are recreational trails programs open in the system. That's PRT. Uh, so you want to make sure you're looking at ours. You know, um, and for example, we're going to do a local activities grant. So I'm going to click on that. Anytime that you're in the system and it turns, a line turns green, you can click anywhere on that line and it'll take you here. Now, obviously, I'm working with some other folks and I've got some grants already in here. You probably you will not be seeing that until you've, you've applied for something. And you'll see that copy existing application is an option. And I'll uh, show that to you in just a moment. But right now, let's start a new application. And this is where you're going to give it a description. So this is going to be a um, American Revolution in Baxley County um production or play okay and the primary contact is going to be me and i'm going to save the form it's going to ask you to save the form multiple times on this general information section do not mess with this application id just come down to this next question here so you can represent multiple organizations in the system 
For example, I have all of, I'm listed on all of these organizations, uh, uh, organizational chart uh, so that I can help them with some of their grants. So for right now, we're gonna stick with our test county, but you can be listed under multiple locations. So once you've again picked this next thing, you're gonna hit save the form. And here's a really important section. When I click here to additional applicants, I'm going to add Molly Fortune. Molly, you're gonna be on this grant with me. Um, and the reason um, we do that is so that she can see it in her applications as well. So when she goes to sign in, she'll be able to help me with this application. Couple notes on that. Um, the person who initiates the, um, the, the grant application, that primary contact, is the only one who can change the general information page. So that's very important. They're the only one who can add those additional applicants and change the title and things like that, or change the organization. If you change, we had one group who were thought this was gonna be their um, fiscal agent, but they ended up sw switching to another one. So we had to change their organization, but only the person who had initiated the application can make changes to the general information page. But anybody listed under additional applicants can help with the other sections. It's not good to have multiple people in there at once, it does not auto save. I'll say that again, it does not auto save. However, um, it is gives you some flexibility to help other people work with you. So I'm actually not gonna complete this one. I'm gonna go back. And I'm gonna look at my other applications so that the one that I've already filled out a lot of it, this is one that I cloned. So what I did is I went to my funding opportunity. I went to my local activities. I copied an existing application and I clicked on this little box right here and copied my application. And that's how I created the application that we're gonna look at next. I've gotta find it just in my long list. Let's see, editing. Okay, here we go. So this is the one I want to look at. So um, once you've initiated the application, anytime you go back in, you're gonna edit the application. And all those components we mentioned earlier, they're all listed here under your application preview. And it's telling me I can't submit it. Why can't I submit it? Because these sections aren't marked as complete. Always when you copy, so if you're going in and using an old application to create a new one, make sure that you go in and edit this uh, general information page. Don't worry about the ID, leave it the same. But see how it put this copy on the end? So I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I change that. And we're gonna change this to Baxley County, uh, American Revolution Four. Okay. And I'm gonna also add Molly Fortune as an additional applicant down here and save that. So we've completed our first component. Let's look at our cover sheet. So I'm gonna edit the form, and every time you hit edit, it's gonna take you back to the top of this, the form. Sorry about that, <laughs> that's just the way it works. Um, and there are multiple places, they all mean the same thing, they mean edit the form. The first two questions, just to keep um, people who wander onto this site um, who don't know that this has to be about the American Revolution in South Carolina, um, th are these two questions here. Are you located in South Carolina? The only exception to that, if I say no, if you have a research or publication grant and you are writing or publishing something specifically about the American Revolution in South Carolina, then you could still apply. Otherwise, you've got to say yes. We want it to be people in South Carolina receiving these South Carolina funds. Um, does your project specifically pertain to the American Revolution? Yes. And in my example here, um, we're going to be government. You can apply as the official County 250 committee, but again, best practice is to have your fiscal agent be the actual applicant. That means when you come down here to who's gonna manage your funds, it needs to be the applicant because your fiscal agent is applying. You can put other a fiscal agent or individual. If you put individual, it hides everything away. Um, we're gonna stick with applicant because again, that's best practice. So this is where we were talking about, there's two different, we wanna have two different people who are managing the funds. So often the county 250 person is gonna be the project director 
or this could be um, somebody who's the curator of the museum or the um, you know, individual who's writing the paper. This will be your project director. The fiscal officer is going to represent that fiscal agent. So I had to put Alexander Hamilton in here. So he's, he's managing our funds for Baxley County and we have him listed. Now this question here means can one of these two people, either Charles or Alexander, can they sign off on spending money? Or is there somebody else who needs to do that? So this is the county treasurer, but he can't sign off on spending funds. It's gonna be the county administrator who's gonna sign off on spending funds. So George Washington is gonna be our county administrator and we're going to put him in here and it is going to require you to fill everything out sometimes you have to put a placeholder if you don't know that person's email um and we're going to baxley county and he's also going to be on main street by the pipe in baxley county now when you do it as state it puts south carolina at the top it's supposed to auto populate, but it doesn't. So just, just keep in mind, it will be at the very top of that drop down. So I've added the authorizing officer and I'm gonna save my form. So I've completed everything on the cover sheet. I'm gonna mark it as complete. So as we complete each section, we're gonna see these add up and eventually we'll have a, a green light here to submit this. In our narrative, here I'm gonna edit the form. And I've already filled out a lot of this, but once again, a reminder, overall goal or purpose and revolutionary era in South Carolina. There are two questions here, and this is your elevator speech. So in Baxley County 250 plans to research and design a tour of American Revolution sites in Baxley County, design, print a brochure, create a digital version, organize a tour with stakeholders and press and market the tour. All sites uh, will be confirmed using primary sources and research as American Revolution era sites. Any unconformed local legends will be listed as such. So that's my summary. And then this is a section here where we help us make decisions as we start to just have limited funds. We're going to have to make some decisions. And two of the things that are just two of the things that we're looking at, but they help us make this decision. Um, is based on your county. What county are you located in? Um, we don't have Baxley in here because that's made up. So I put Abbeville. Actually, let's change this and say Barnwell. So it will auto create the only drop down that you're going to need here. Once you select your county, it should tell you what tier by in the drop down. So make sure you select it. Um, so this is uh, based on the number of battle and skirmishes based on the Carolina dot com a website um, this tells us do you have a ton of things you need to talk about for the american revolution and this one's about average here when i hit save it's going to update my department of revenue tax job credit ranking this lets us know um, since economic development is what we're going for with this cultural tourism um, then this tells us if your county needs extra help. Uh, so this is one I'm going to save my form and see if it updates. Again, it takes us to the top. Yep, see now Barnwell is listed in tier four, needing uh, the most help of, uh, that's a section uh, that needs more help with economic development based on several factors that the uh, DOR puts together. And that auto populated since you had chosen Barnwell here. I'm going to edit my form. It's going to take me back to the top. And I'm going to scroll down to finish filling this out. Have you received funding? So if you have, you say yes. And let's, you want to give a total. So if you got one for five and one for 10, then you have $15,000. And then you would describe the, the project uh, there and save the form. And again, it takes you to the top. It does not auto save, but I often wait to save as long as I am the only one in the system, uh, just because it does keep taking you back to the top. All right, we're in the project detail section, and this is where you're going to select your grant type. Again, we tried to have universal forms so that it's easier to clone. We have so many different grant types. So this is one way to give you some feedback on what you need to be thinking about when you look at your specifics. So if we were doing a research grant, 
those would be the topics to really consider as you fill out this section. But we're doing local activities grant, so these are some things we're going to think about. These are the choices of things that you can do with the local activities grant. Marketing is one of them and other is one of them. Uh, so you, uh, if we wanted to do um, other, we could, but we're going to actually do tours. And I think because I changed it, it took all my execution of plan out. So <laughs> keep that in mind. If you do change this one up here, it changes these, this section. Um, but here it gives me my points to think about. So this is where I would talk about the, the steps that we're going to take, particularly about the research that will be done into making sure these sites are accurate, um, and then having the peer review done to make sure that our interpretation is up to snuff. We're going to have a, a graphic designer and a GIS person work with us to design the map and the brochure. We're going to have a web professional help us put it online. We're going to work with the Council on Aging to uh, provide the bus for the tour that we're going to do with our stakeholders and our press. And then we're going to, and you just continue to list the steps that you're going to take. And I'm also want to talk about who's my target audience for this event. You know, maybe if you're doing an educational piece, target audience is your eighth grade students who are taking South Carolina history. Um, what are the details of the event as we talked about? Who's going to be planning it? Who's hosting it? What stakeholders are you bringing together? So there's 1500 characters allowed for this. It gives you a little more space um, to fill out that section. So then we have our scholars and peer review. We want to make sure that what we're putting out there is accurate. Um, and I know that's so difficult um, to double check everything, but it is important. And you want to make sure that you're respecting your historians. They may need to get paid to do this. Um, so think about that when you're building your budget, build in some peer review and some inclusive peer review when it comes to uh, looking at your interpretation. Uh, there's a wonderful story of Emily Geiger in Newberry County, but the research has been done and they can't find any documentation. So we still have to talk about her as a legend hat says. Um, so it's important to make sure that we are passing correct information on to the next generation. So keep that in mind as you go to do a project. Promotion. So this is where you can talk about um, not only you're having a local activity, but how are you going to get this information out to the public? So we're going to have a, a, a press invite. We're going to have a press release. We're going to be on the local radio station. We're going to work with our partners like the chamber and the PRT to incorporate this into their tours and promotions. Uh, don't forget your scatter groups. Think about your scatter group, which is your regional tourism group. They are wonderful assets and can at least give you some advice on how to best promote this and we'll often put this information on their website for free, but you do have to ask them about that. Um, deliverables and impact. This is the big section when it comes to uh, deliverables and uh, measuring success. So the expected outcome of this grant is a tour of well-documented American Revolution era sites with printed brochure, digital assets, Awareness marketing will also be completed through this grant. And then how are we going to measure success? Baxley County will report back attendance numbers and brief uh, feedback forms from the first three months of tours. So that's how you're going to measure success and report back to um, SC250. And also just for tracking for your own purposes. Um, the reason we ask for this is it's good to you know pivot and, and change as needs uh, change or as you get feedback from folks, maybe you need to make it a little shorter or it's not as family friendly as it should be or um, people can't walk that far in the woods <laughs> you're doing a tour. Those kind of things that you need to keep in, in mind as you evolve your, your activity. Inclusion. So it is the express, this on the web. Ah, you know, my, my phone started talking to me, excuse me. Um, it's an express goal of SC250 Commission to be intentionally inclusive. And that means that we are not just taking a standard list of, of assets from the American Revolution that we've seen before. Yes, you use those, those are important. But you want to make sure that we're looking beyond that to some of the stories of the historically disenfranchised African Americans, Native Americans, women and children specifically. But uh, just keeping that eye out for those other things. And you may want to put some funding towards that. 
Um, maybe there is a professor at your local HBC uh, um, history department or reaching out and um, paying someone from the Catawba Cultural Center to review your information that you're writing up about the Catawba. You know, so making sure or having them help you with that project. But again, if you have a historian, they are professional. Keep that in mind uh, and build that into your budget. Maybe um, you also have to make sure you're talking about loyalists. South Carolina was a bloody civil war. So make sure we're talking about both sides and remembering that each county um, has those who without major battles also have stories that are about this era. Um, the home life and other things that were happening. And also reaching out to your communities to encourage participation beyond those who may have been here historically. Uh, Latinx and Asian communities are big in South Carolina. We need to make sure that we are including all of our communities that have uh, that are part. And this is everyone's uh, anniversary. So think about ways that inclusion can be part of this project and intentionally um, part of your decision making. Participation and access these public funds. It really needs to have a public access, at least for a portion of it. Um, and this is very important um, to in include. Think about, you know, audio uh, for those who don't have access. Otherwise, you know, who, um, keeping making sure that your websites are ADA compliant. Those other th things that you can do to make sure um, participation and access is there. Engagement, so it's great to have kind of a follow up, a takeaway that someone takes from a tour or a map, or maybe there's a the website gives you more information. They can listen to audio after they've done the tour um, or a postcard that they could share with someone else uh, is an example I used here. Longevity, this often gets confused for the impact section. So this is about those tangible items and the matrix of measurement. This down here, longevity, is about what do you want to get accomplished? What makes your heart warm when you get excited about this project? This is what you're writing about here and how you want to have that lasting impact on your community. And then simply a list of your partnerships, but you can also say um, what they're going to do in this section here. So this is where we talk about those partnerships and we love to see you getting done more with, uh, with partnerships. I am going to save the form. You cannot, the next section is the planning and timetable. You cannot get there without saving the form. So I'm going to save the form. It's going to take me to the top. It's supposed to take me to the top. All right, if it doesn't, it means, oh, I know why, because I've got a field that's required. So you can always go to the top and it should tell you what you're missing a lot of times, or you'll see the red that shows up just like that. I'm going to hit save and now it let me save. So that happens a lot. The other thing that often happens with this timetable is you'll get a blank row and it's going to tell you that your timetable is not finished because you have a blank row. If you click on the blank row and delete it, then you should be good to go. Um, so, so if we want to delete this one, we could delete and you delete it and then it does take you back to the top. And then I'm going to add um, that after our maiden tour, we're going to add a row to our timeline because really the last thing that's going to be done is the documentation of uh, review matrix. So we're going to report uh, tour numbers and survey results. And we're going to finish that by Actually, this one I've got going into next year, my May 15th. All right, now we've finished all of our sections. We've done our time planning and timetable. And now we're going to mark this section as complete. And we now have three sections complete. And I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to try to speed up a little bit here. This is the assurances and certifications. It says things like, Everything's accurate. You're willing to have an orientation meeting with me. All kinds of things are in here. So please review this carefully. Um, but um, this is one that where you can print the word version and share with this with the person who's going to be the decision maker. So because we're the county doing this application, I want my county administrator, George Washington, to actually sign this. And by saying yes here, it's basically a digital si signature. Now, again, we're a county. 
So it's so important to keep your chief elected official looped in on what you're doing if you're a municipality or a county. So you want to make sure that you make sure they tell them what you're doing, have them in on the loop and have their name listed here as being included in the conversation and understanding your assurances and certifications mark as complete. So each section we're going to mark as complete. This next section is our support materials. Now, um, again, this is listed on the page where you can show this to your fiscal agent uh, on that page about the grant. Um, and here are the main things. A W-9 from your fiscal agent, their current budget for their current fiscal year. Some people are, are, are July 1 to June 30th. Some people are calendar. Whatever your fiscal year is, make sure that you put your current budget here. And then this one will be your last fiscal year statement. So this can be for nonprofits. This could be a 990 even. So just keep those in mind. The last, and sometimes you don't have like an audited version. Um, send me what you have. It could even be a statement, your end of year statement that your treasurer provides. Um, these here are required. They don't have check marks um, because not everybody's a nonprofit. But if you are a nonprofit, a 501c3 or a 501c6, as a lot of chambers are, then you need to make sure you upload these as well and you just click on it and select your file. You do have to include a description and save your file. So those are required if you are a nonprofit. This, um, I also have on here, this is not required for the local activities grant. Um, but for the two grants, the county asset assessment and tourism plan and the county organizing grant, you do have to be a county 250 group in order to apply. So for those two grants, you have to put these two things here. Now, if you are a county 250 and this is your, you are the, the applying through your fiscal agent, it might be nice to attach your agreement with your fiscal agent. Or if you have any other documentations, you can add a new attachment here. And I will say that we're about to change this so that um, we are going to require a letter from your county 250 if you are not representing the county 250. But just to say that you have looped them in, you've talked to your, your county 250. So even if you're the, the county museum or the uh, another organization in the community, you can certainly apply. But it's nice to have them looped in and all working together. So look for that coming soon where you'll see probably another check mark coming to this section. Um, but uh, just best practice to work with your county group. I'm going to mark this as complete. And then I'm going to go to budget. So we talked earlier about the difference between personnel and contract. So this is going to be oversight of the project. This is going to be the staff at the, the museum who um, is working with the fiscal agent, which is the county. They're probably in, um, in the under the umbrella of the county anyway. So they're going to be doing the oversight. They're going to probably give the tours. They're going to be organizing everything. You can do up to 20% of your ask. And this is actually 20% of our ask that we're going to include here. Um, you do have to document their time and it's very specific on that. So if you don't need to do this, great, skip it. But if you are interested in that, I can help you walk through documenting that staff time. Supplies and materials. So there's this section. Equipment. Again, I'm skipping them because I really don't have that for this one. And then most of mine lives under contractual breakdown. We've got historic research. And I also don't mind bundling things. So this is where we're going to pay somebody to help with the historic research. We're going to pay somebody uh, with our local um, historically black college to, to help us with, with a peer review. Uh, we're going to you know, bring somebody in from Catawba and pay them a stipend to help with that. Um, to, so that's all kind of under the same historic research bundle. Um, because if you are going to make changes to this budget later on, you do need to loop me in. So as generic as you can be while still covering your, all your assets here, um, make sure that you do that. Graphic design and web design. I put in printing services for our um, map that we're going to make. And I skipped acquisition because we're not acquiring any land. 
Um, but then we're going to rent the van. They gave us a discount, but the Council on Aging, we're going to rent their van. And we're going to do some marketing of social media and local marketing of our tour once we get started. And that brings us to this section. So everything above the cost share is your ask for SC250. Everything in the cost share is what is your match. So we are not reaching our 20% match here. So let's go ahead and figure out what we need to add to this match. Now you will remember earlier we had a formula for that. So if my ask that I'm going to do is nine thousand four hundred and thirty-seven fifty. Okay, I'm going to divide that by eighty percent, and that gives me eleven thousand nine hundred seven hundred ninety-six. So I'm going to multiply that by twenty percent. So this number here, and see when I, it turns green once I hover over it, that means I can click anywhere on that line. And I'm going to change this amount to 23.59.38. Let's see if that works. Did I do my math right? Woo! We are now at 20% match. So again, use that formula, and I will share that with you so that you can have that in your back pocket. We're going to mark that as complete. And look, we have green. We have green. And we're going, we now have a submit button. Now, once you hit this red button right here, there is no more editing to your, um, to your application. So please make sure that everybody who's working on, the, on it has completed everything before you hit that button. But we just completed and submitted a, um, an application. So there you go. We will take some questions as I pull back up my PowerPoint with a few final notes. I know we are just under two hours. I'm sorry, I went a little long today. Um, but does anybody have any questions? Uh, you may have to unmute yourself. Questions, concerns? Okay. I don't see anybody with their hands raised. Okay. Just some final notes, uh, then we will, um, no, nope, I didn't mean to do that. Excuse me. We're going to, from current slides, still, now we're back at the beginning. All right. Well, let's see if we can get to the right slide. Just a reminder of all our information and a couple more quick um, notes. Uh, pro tips, make sure you read all the information, find those links on our website. You will need to register for a state vendor number if you are awarded a, a grant. And again, remember, you can copy your first application and apply for another grant. Another reminder to think about other grants that are out there. There's some amazing pro, uh, things going on with SCPRT. Undiscovered South Carolina, I think, is one that very much would be something that, that could fit with some of these projects. We also have state historic grants here at SHPO at the archives um, and we can I can share some of those links with you all. Also, the state library has an amazing resource. So I will share with you following this this webinar. I'll share with you that link um, where you can go and, and get more information from them. They have a lot of information on foundations um, and uh, other ways you can raise funds for some of these projects that we're looking to do and give us some feedback. So uh, stay in touch. Uh, you can email me at hawkins at southcarolina250.com. Um, Molly, of course, is, is standing by, and Bill Davies will be back on the road soon, I'm sure, visiting some of you guys. So, hey, Heather, we have a question from Martha real quick. If we here. copy the application and apply for another, does it assign a different number? Yes, so it should be a brand new application. Um, so, but so you don't need to, I know it, it looks like you can edit it and for reasons mainly so I can make edits if we ever have to have, we have ever have reason to do that to change the number. I think it does it that way, but you, it will automatically assign it a number. Right. Any other questions? What are people like quiet class? I like it. You may have to unmute yourself if you do have a question. What's everybody excited about? What's everybody 
looking forward to? What are you working on? Kayla doesn't look like she's typing or writing right now. You need to write. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila's one of our great authors. We love her. <laughs> Well, I know that was a lot, but I wanted to get as detailed as I could today. Um, I hope I didn't scare everybody off. I uh, just wanted to to um, make sure that you got as much information as possible um, as we go into um, at applying. Again, the deadline is February the 9th uh, for the next competitive round. The County 250 grants, however, you can apply for at any time up through May 9th of this fiscal year. So um, keep that in mind. I'd be glad to do a one on one with anybody um, or if there's someone else in your organization that would need some assistance. Just let us know. Uh, we'll be glad to assist you um, and spend, know that it's not 1 of those things you can do at the very last minute. So think about that budget. Do some get some quotes. Really think about what are you going to spend money to re to reach that goal? What? Thank you. Well, I hope that I hope that was okay because y'all are so quiet. You make me nervous. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, wait, Molly wait. has. Yeah. So that's going to be made available on the website. Martha asked. Yes. So um, we are recording this, hopefully, and it looks like yes. Um, so we will. I will put this on our website on YouTube actually as well. Um, and I will send you all, everybody who's registered for this, I will send you a follow up email that will have the link to the webinar if you need to share it with someone in your organization. And if there's anything that you guys would like to see in addition to that, I told you I'd send those links for those other potential grants from other organizations. Um, and then just some more information, reminders about deadlines will be in that email. So look for that coming in the next couple of days. Perfect. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Bye, Thank guys. You. Keep doing the awesome work that you're doing. Mwah. <laughs>